All right, welcome back everybody. This is part three of our text adventure game tutorial. At the end of the last video, uh, you saw what happens with uh, making games and making apps in general. Uh, my whole editor crashed. <laughs> and, and so um, it's working now. I got everything up and running. Um, it's exactly the same code uh, from the video. Um, I actually watched the video to re reproduce the code perfectly. Um, and uh, so I will show you that it actually works. Um, let's go ahead and make sure it saves properly. All right, good, nothing exploded. Um, let's go to here and we'll run it. So now instead of just having the location name, uh, we can enter directions into the input box. And when we click enter, it takes us to where we need to go, which is perfect because we started on destroyed freeway. We went south to dusty movie theater. Now, if we want to go west, we should end up in empty parking lot. So let's test it here. West, enter. Hey, all right. So now we have some kind of functionality. Now, some of you may already be thinking, well, what happens if you go west again? Um, well, let's see. If I go west again, I get suburban neighborhood for some reason. Well, the reason why is because I subtracted one from my six and I'm not supposed to be able to go west and end up in suburban neighborhood. I want this to block. OK, what if I go south from suburban neighborhood? Well, I should end up at spooky old house, but let's try to go south again because there is nothing in my index or in my array that's higher than eight. And when we go south, we want to add one to the array. So let's see what happens when we go south one more time from spooky old house undefined because there's nothing there. So we want to add in some uh, some restraints for our character movement, but we're not going to do that this time. What I want to do with this video is I want to add some pictures because this is super boring and I want to make it look cool. I want to make it look nice. When, I, when it says destroyed freeway, I want there to be a picture of a destroyed freeway. Now, I've done a little bit of preparation for this. Um, I've already kind of pre-staged some, some pictures. Um, so let's go back um, here. Um, we have, I have these nine pictures and basically all I did was I just did a Google image search for, you know, kind of the, the kind of pictures I'm looking for. And I just grabbed them and uh, dumped them into an image editing software. I made sure they all had the same uh, aspect ratio and they were all the same size. Um, and then I applied this cool uh, night goggles looking effect on them to give it all kind of the same theme, uh, make them all kind of feel the same. Um, and that way it doesn't play it, it all kind of looks uniform and it doesn't mess around too much with the design. So I have all of these, but I actually need to download them because uh, I'm going to place them in my folder. I will show you how to handle um, images. Um, so it's going to create a zipped folder of all my images and it downloaded them. And I'm going to put that zipped folder into my dead wrong folder. All right. And now when I go into dead wrong, I have this here. So I'm going to open with, um, sure, WinZip, I guess. Oh, apparently not. Uh, what am I using to unzip files? Uh, let's extract them here. All right, cool. And let's get rid of that. So now I have all of my pictures here, my nine, right? I want to put them in a separate folder called images so that my this folder doesn't get too cluttered. Um, all right, drop those in there, drop these in there as well. So now I have my images folder with my nine pictures in it that we're going to call whenever it's time or whenever we're at that location. So here's how we're going to do it in the code. Um, right above the output, because I want the image to be above the, um, the location we are going to do the image source is going to be equal to nothing. Okay. Um, just cause we want to be able to push the image to, uh, to that element. And we're going to set a predetermined width and height. 
and the width is going to be 480 because my pictures are 480 and the height is going to be 270 because they are 270 tall and I made sure again that my pictures were the right size um cool and that should be good so we just have an image there and that's really all we need to do uh for there but now we have to tell the we have to be able to tell the program what picture goes where and when um so let's go down to uh let's put it right here above the button um we're going to build um we're going to build the images so var images or image we'll just do image var image uh, document dot query selector and we're going to make that img okay and now that's there and in the render which is going to be important right in the render we'll go down past here in the render function we want to instead of just outputting our location we also want to put in hold on one second we also want to put in uh, change the image source so image.src equals images because that's the name of the folder plus images map location so the images plus images map location is going to go in there now I realize I just did something that I didn't want to do um, I forgot to do something important I called an array that I assumed I had already created but I haven't so I need to create an array called images so I have this array for the map I'm just going to go ahead and copy all this and I'm going to cheat create the images and I'm going to use this same array to create an image array so instead of our map it's going to be images and instead of map one maybe I shouldn't have copied it um, we're going to call this building dot, dot jpeg we're going to give it the file name um, copy and so now we have an array with a bunch of abandoned office buildings in it uh, I'm gonna pull this folder up just so I can make sure I get the file names correct I'm gonna make this a little bigger so it's easier to see okay so abandoned office building and I know that they're all JPEGs because I created them that way um, zero well let's see let's change the indexes here okay now one is my rundown supermarket so rundown supermarket so it's just that run down super market okay two is my haunted forest haunted forest okay three is my looted shopping mall.jpg four is destroyed freeway dot jpeg number five is suburban neighborhood dot jpeg right yep six is empty parking lot dot jpeg 
seven, Dusty Movie Theater. Yeah. And eight is Spooky Old House. Oh. Make sure you're very careful about making sure that these file names match up or the image won't display properly. Let's go ahead and test this out. Let's see if this works. So um, run DW2. Hey, look, destroyed freeway. Okay, so that's the image. Um, let's go north. Run down supermarket. Let's go west. Ooh, abandoned office building. Okay. East should be back to our supermarket. And then another east, haunted forest. Let's go south. Suburban neighborhood. Spooky old house. And let's go west again. Dusty movie theater. Empty parking lot. And let's go north one more time. Looted shopping mall. So all of they all of them work. They all work. And you know, they have the same kind of visual effect and they have this they're the same size. So we're not we're not seeing everything jump around on the screen. And that's gonna help later if you create like a like an image viewport um, later on whenever you're building all the different game elements and making it look better. Um, it's best if they're all the same size. Um, let's see. So yeah, so now we have images there. Just make our game look a little bit nicer. Uh, I think that's that should be it for this video, um, for video number three. Next, let's see. Next, maybe I should, yeah. You know what we'll do? Next time we will set in those constraints for moving outside of the game, game area. Um, so uh, that way we have a game that actually doesn't break for no reason. Um, so stay tuned for episode four where we build in that functionality. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.